here. So this is the OSA, the Organic Seed Alliance Greenhouse, Research Greenhouse, our small but beautiful greenhouse. And we have about 120 carrot plants in here that we're attempting to make self-pollinations on in a breeding effort for the uh, Northern Organic Variety Improvement Collaborative, which is a cooperative grant with four institutions, um, Cornell University, University of Wisconsin, Oregon State, and OSA slash Washington State University. So I, each of the four institutions has a crop that they're breeding, and I'm working on carrots. So this, this project started, the kernel of this uh, carrot part of this project started with Nash Uber's uh, carrot production. Nash does about 60 to 80, up to 60 to 80 acres of carrots every winter. He does them as a winter production, a, a true fall into winter production here in the uh, moderate uh, coastal climate of the Olympic Peninsula. He's able to plant mid-summer, uh, starting in June into July, for fall and winter harvest. But the most important thing that Nash has struggled with has been getting carrots that have strong enough tops to go into the winter season, and I'll explain why you need strong tops, as well as having good quality uh, roots that retain their flavor, texture, and sweetness that all the consumers. So the carrots that we have in here are the result of a cross that we made based on getting the good strong tops that Nash Uber needs at, his, at Nash's produce in Squim, Washington. Nash with the winter carrots has to have, once, once the rains come in October, which uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a very rainy uh, fall winter here in Washington State, and once the rains come in in October, it's very difficult to get out into the field with any kind of equipment to do two things, to the cultivating of, of the carrots, which is what uh, controls the weeds, number one, and also having a strong top to be able to pull the carrots. So Nash needs two things from the carrot, as I said. He needs the strong tops and he needs good flavor. This project was really started based on the need for the strong tops. Let me explain the two reasons why that's so important. First of all, once the fall rains come in October, it's, uh, it's, it's very iffy on if, if the farmer can get into the field on a regular basis with cultivation. And in organic farming, we use mechanical cultivation to control the weeds uh, because we're not using chemical herbicides. So the, uh, the weed pressure really starts to build in October and November around carrots with uh, predominantly with the weed called chickweed, which can literally engulf your plants and make them hard to harvest and also cut off uh, sunlight to the plants and smother them. So you have to have a strong top carrot that has a top at least uh, if possible, 14 to 18 inches tall. Uh, Nash, after screening dozens and dozens of varieties over the years, man has managed to find three varieties that he uses, but he's never been completely happy on how, how strong and tall the tops are. I, I have a carrot that I collected in New Zealand called Spring Market, which was grown for the Spring Market in the North Island of New Zealand which very tall, sturdy tops. Nash was very impressed by it because number one, for the number one reason, competing with weeds in the fall. This is a classic example of a real trait necessary for organic farmers that we can, that we can give to the organic farmer through plant breeding. So a really nice strong top to compete with the chickweed, grow very quickly, outcompete the chickweed, and Amazingly, the chickweed will not grow up and over uh, a plant that's adequately shading it in the row. So the need for mechanical cultivation goes way down if you have a good, strong, tall top. The second need for a strong, tall top is later in the winter, into January and February, Nash has by then uh, gone through 
at least a dozen to 20 good solid freeze th freezing and thawing events which tend to uh, freeze away the outer leaves, the, actually the leaf stems called the petioles of the carrot and slowly over every freeze thaw event you lose more and more of your outer leaves eventually leaving very little leaf mass in the, in, in the interior of the crown of the carrot. He has to have a good leaf mass because the kind of cultivators they use have these belts that grab, that grab onto the, the top and pull the carrot after, out of the ground after they've been undermined. So you have to have a top that will take this repeated freezing and thawing and have lots of leaves to still have something left in February and into March when Nash has got his most important crops of the year because that's when he's making good money. No one else has carrot. So we uh, essentially decided to take that tall New Zealand spring market carrot which is a good old open pollinated variety that was uh, freely available through the public domain and we decided to cross it to one of the uh, open pollinated non-hybrid carrots that Nash had been using that had particularly good flavor, texture, color which all were a little bit lacking in this uh, this older New Zealand carrot spring market. So with with just a bit of very simple uh, plant breeding know-how we took we planted two rows of uh, the two parent parental types the spring ma market and actually a carrot called rumba an old Dutch carrot uh, the one for good flavor we planted them side by side in the field we after one season we dug up the roots and evaluated them to make sure we had good root quality good shape good color we then took the select amount of roots from each of those two varieties. We replanted them. We allowed them to flower in the field, and we allowed the, the native insects to cross-pollinate between the rumba and the, and the spring market. This way getting, oh, essentially putting the genes together for the good tops from the spring market, the pretty good tops from the, uh, from the rumba, and then the good uh, eating qualities from the rumba there good flavor, texture, and also the good color. So after doing that, then we took that seed off of, off of those plants, which the insects had cross-pollinated for us, and mixed it all up, and we planted that out uh, the following spring. Uh, we got roots, and the roots went through the winter, and so this spring, in March, we harvested all of the roots and easily found the ones that were obvious hybrids between the rumba and the spring market and I took about 200 of the most select roots and then planted them into clay pots first of all we cut a section of them off we had a carrot that was pretty much this long a good 8 to 10 inch long carrot we cut them off to about 5 to 6 inches we inspected them for interior color quality we ate a piece of the root and saw if it tasted pretty good, the piece that we cut off, and then we decided to go to the next step, which is here in the greenhouse. Now it is June 7th here in Port Townsend, Washington. We have carrots actively flowering in the greenhouse. Again, these, these were the roots uh, that resulted from the cross between the rumba and the spring market we, uh, that we harvested in March of this year. We uh, cut them off. We selected very uh, diligently to find the best looking roots. We cut off the tips, tasted them, inspected the color, decided on which 150 to 160 roots we liked the best, and we then proceeded to plant them into a good potting mix with a lot of compost mixed in, uh, in these six inch clay pots. And we use clay, by the way, because it breathes, and boy, when you plant a carrot root into a clay pot, it will rot very easily on you because there is a certain amount of decay that goes on as the carrot transitions from the first year of vegetative growth to the second year of reproductive growth.